representing the first quarter, the second dot, the second quarter of the year, the third quarter, and the fourth quarter in the name of the Lord. How many know that we serve a God of progress? We serve a God of elevation. We serve a God that doesn't want us in the same place uh, in the name of the Lord from one year to the next, but he wants to take us from one dimension to the next in the name of the Lord. And here we find that the, the word of God lets us know that God is not unrighteous and he will never do anything that, that resembles wickedness. He has not forgotten your work and labor of love. He is a holy and infallible God and his word is infallible. Isn't that good news? God God is infallible. He is, he is absolutely perfect. And whatever comes out of the mouth of God is going to come to pass from Genesis to Revelation. There is no compromise when it comes to the word of God. But the word of God in the name of the Lord says what it says. It is what it is. It will not change in the name of the Lord for anybody. There is no compromise to the word of God. So we find that God is infallible. He is not unrighteous, but he is a righteous God. And just last week when I didn't get to preach the message, I reminded you that God does not get amnesia when you serve out of love for him and his people. Some people think that God gets amnesia. God has recorded everything that we have done in the name of the Lord with the right intentions. And we have to be mindful in, the, in this life in which we live, people will forget what you've done for them. Oh, glory to God. People will forget, but, but, but God never forgets in the name of the Lord what you have done unto his glory. We have, we have a mandate in the name of the Lord to, to be used by God, to touch the lives of, of other people, those that are saved in the name of the Lord. As your pastor, I want to touch your life. I want to change your life with the word of God. I want to minister to you. I want to encourage you. I want to shepherd you. I want to give you the guidance that a natural shepherd would give to a sheep. I want to give you the counsel and the direction as I'm led by the Holy Ghost. I can't do this by myself, but all of us have been called to serve in some capacity. There is something that you do. There's something about you that can affect someone else's life. Don't be stingy with your gift. Watch out. Watch out now. Oh, glory to God. You, you, you can't pick and choose who you serve. No more than you can pick and choose who you love. Paul said, you have to love without dissimulation. Some people love folk because they love them. But how many know the blessing is loving those that hate your gut? How, how, how many know you're more like God when you're more like his son, Jesus Christ, because he died for those that rejected him. He died for those that would give him the hand. So we have, to be, we have to be mindful that people will forget what you've done for them. God never forgets what you do for him. He never forgets how you pour into somebody else's life. He never forgets a deed that you do. And it doesn't mean, and I have to remind you, we're not saved by works. But works count. Oh, glory to God. God didn't save you because you did something good. He saved you because you were jacked up. I'm pointing at myself. See, some people think they were saved because, you know, they were born on the right side of the tracks. They did everything well. They never offended nobody. They don't walk across nobody's grass. They don't steal. They don't do this. They don't do Let me tell you something. God didn't save you because of anything. Uh -oh. He loved us without cause. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Ask your neighbor, why did God save you? Why did God save you? Answer them. Tell them the truth. I don't know. I don't know. There was I don't nothing know. on my record. That was worthy of the salvation that God has given me. As a result of being saved, God is saying, you've got to minister to one another. Oh, glory to God. You've got to minister to one another. For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love. Your motive to serve should be love. Let me say that. The motive to serve should be love. If you got the wrong motives, it's just a good deed. But when you serve and it's a labor of love, God gets the glory out of it. Sometime in this life, you're going to have to serve people that don't like you. Oh, glory to God. It's getting quiet in the church. I better start hooping. 
Colossians 3.23, around it. When I get through with the scripture, just go back to the foundational scripture, which is Hebrews 6 and 10. But Colossians 3.23 and 24 says these words, And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily. Do it with enthusiasm. Do it with commitment. Do it out of love. Do it from the depth of your heart as to the Lord and not unto men. I love you, but when I'm serving you, I'm serving the Lord. You love one another, but when you, when you bless them, you're serving the Lord. Serve people and know that you're doing it for God. It says in the 24th verse of the same chapter, it says, knowing that the Lord, ye shall receive the reward of inheritance, for ye serve the Lord Christ. As a result of serving one another, you have an inheritance coming. Oh, watch out, watch out. Watch out. Oh, Romans 8 tells us that we are heirs and joint heirs with Christ. If you don't have an inheritance on the earth and nobody leaves you any money when they die, the Lord said, you got a spiritual inheritance. Because how many know that money is spent? Yeah. Money is temporal. Let me tell you, when you serve on the earth, it's not temporal, it's eternal. Build your spiritual resume, let me say that once again, and serve as unto the Lord. Have some goals and objectives of things that you want to do for God. The 25th verse of the same chapter says, but he that doeth wrong shall receive, shall receive for the wrong which he hath done. And there is no respect of person. Why do wrong when you can do right? right. Sometimes right goes against the flesh, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. God tells you to serve someone, you asking yourself, what have they done for me lately? And God wants to see if you want to serve them when they ain't done nothing for you at all. <laughs> we have a responsibility as spirit-filled believers. We are saved. We have, we have to communicate salvation. We have to walk the gospel. We have to live the life that Jesus has given us. We have to walk in his footsteps. Too many times people think that, that that poem, Footprints in the Sand, is just something nice to say. But how many know that that poem has some relevance? You want to walk in the steps of Jesus because I want to say to you right now, some of you must know that your steps have been ordered by God. Your steps have been ordered by God. And some of those steps are to serve. Those, those steps are to minister in the name of the Lord. Once again, the word minister means servant. It means attendant. Mm, let me give you some natural application. A flight attendant is not there to serve themselves. They are to serve everybody that's on that plane. And when you get the peanuts instead of the pretzels, you get upset. Well, at least you got something. They serve you. They're an attendant. A, a, a minister, those that minister, is a servant, an attendant. I'll get there in a minute. Luke 12 and 7. But even the very hairs of your head are, are all numbered. Y'all need to get some pen and paper. I'll write these verses down. Y'all looking at me, you're going to forget them by tomorrow. Everybody hold up their pen. Hold up, hold up what you what you writing with, what you document. Okay, you got a phone and a tablet. Where, where your pen at? Y'all, y'all got this, you know, this, you know, uh, visual memory. Get out a pen and paper, get out your tablet, get out your phone, and take some notes. Yes, sir. Okay, I'm moving on. Sidebar. But Luke 12 and 7 says, But even the, the very hairs of your head are numbered. Fear ye not, therefore, ye are of more value than many sparrows. Oh, glory to God. It goes to, to, back to Matthew, the sixth chapter. The conclusion of that chapter tells us that God provides for the sparrow. He provides for the lily of the field. He provides for the sparrow that does not sow. He provides for the lily of the field that doesn't do anything to get its beauty. He provides for that sparrow. He's saying that we have more value than the sparrow. God has confirmed in his word that you are valuable. Tell your neighbor you're valuable. You're valuable. Tell your neighbor I am too. I am too. 
We are valuable based on how we have been created and what God has put in us and what he has put inside of us. It goes all the way back to the book of Genesis, the first chapter and the 27th verse. Genesis says, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. We were created in God's image and his likeness. The only thing that corrupted us was sin. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. But God didn't decide to create us just any ordinary way. Let me tell you something. Tell your neighbor, you know, that you're not junk. You're not junk. In the name of the Lord, you're, you're not. You're, you're recycled material. Put it that way. God made you perfect in the name of the Lord. Sin came in the picture, but God put a perfect spirit on the inside of you. Come, Somebody say, that's good news. That's good news. So when he created us, he created us in his own image and his likeness. The psalmist picks it up in one thirty Psalms one thirty nine and fourteen. This, I'm trying to paint the picture for you that you are valuable to God. Psalms one thirty nine and fourteen says, "I will praise Thee, yeah. for I am fearfully yeah. and wonderfully made." Yeah. I know you cute. <laughs> I know you handsome. Yeah, sir, that's me. Thank you. I know you're cool. I know you're sophisticated. But at the end of the day, you're fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works. There's nobody like you. Don't waste time being a bad copy of somebody else. Oh, glory to God. You're trying to be somebody else and not going to work. Be you. Be what God has made you. Don't worry. He'll, walk, he'll work through your bad attitude. He'll work through your imperfections. He'll work through your inadequacies. It's all right to look in the mirror and say, I'm jacked up, but if it hadn't been for God. In the old church, we would say, if it hadn't been for the Lord on our side, we don't know where we would be. But you are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are his creation. Let me take it further than that. Because it's only one of you, you are God's masterpiece. I know some of you are saying, me, yeah, you. You are God's masterpiece that he has called and appointed with purpose. He has called you to minister to those that need ministering. He just doesn't want you to be saved, twiddling your thumbs in a corner, waiting on the rapture. He wants you to tell somebody else how to make the rapture. He wants, you to he wants you to tell somebody about his son, Jesus Christ, and how he laid down his life and died on a, glo a gory, bloody cross for you and I, nailed hands and feet, bleeding profusely from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. But the blood that poured out of him covered my faults, covered your faults covered my transgressions, covered your iniquities. We need to give God a praise because we are covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. You mind if I just talk to you this morning? For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love which he have showed toward his name. That's a name that sits above every name. Your labor of love is as unto a name in the name of the Lord that sits above every name. There's no name like the name of Jesus. It's the name that saves. It's the name that delivers. It's the name that sets free. It's the name that we lay hands on the sick in the name of the Lord and how we, the name that we cast out devils. It's the name of Jesus that makes the difference. We work in the name under the power of the name of Jesus. But I want to say this to you. You can't just come to church. You have to be saved. You have to respond to the word of God. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things become new. I want to share with you right now that your works that you've done, and this is for the people that haven't done any works, the works that you're getting ready to do. God is about to get in your mix right now. And he's saying it's not enough to be saved. You've got to be saved and you've got to go to work. That's 
right. Go to work. You got to be saved. And you got to be willing to put forth some time and some energy in serving God. God don't need a part-time lover. I told you that. Mm. Stevie Wonder wrote a song, Part-Time Lover. Yeah. Y'all quiet in here. Okay, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> Work comes with reward. Yes, sir. I want to prove it to you because sometimes you think that your work that you're doing unto God, no one recognizes it, but God recognizes it. That's right. That's good. Oh, glory to God. Let me, show how, let me show you how works work and show, and show how we work together to get the job done. God blesses us, and it sounds like this, 1 Corinthians 3, 6 through 7. 1 Corinthians 3, 6 through 7. It says, I have planted, this is Paul talking, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. Paul said, I planted the seed of the word. Apollos came behind and watered the word. But at the end of the day, God gives the increase. How many know we got to work together in this thing? The scripture says how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity and the sister in for that matter. Even though that's not in the Bible, but you know, it's talking about mankind. That we work together in the name of the Lord. That we unite together. So Paul plants Apollo's waters. God gives the increase. It says, so then neither is he that planteth anything, neither he that watereth, but God gives the increase. We participate so God can give the increase. You share Jesus with somebody at the bus stop, at work, at the lunch table, wherever you are, downtown, wherever you are, and you share the word of God and you say, well, nothing happened. Don't believe that. Don't believe that nothing happened. They are not going to forget what words you planted in them, but somebody's going to come along and explain a little bit more, and then God gives the increase. It's a blessing when it all happens in one day, but how many know all you got to do is plant the seed? Amen. You plant the seed of the word. Somebody comes behind and waters the seed, and the Bible says that God gives the increase. The seed is the word of God. Sometimes we want better things to come. Go back to Hebrews 6 and 9. We want better things to come that accompany salvation. But how many know we, sometimes we want, it, we want better things, but we don't want to do anything? <laughs> we, want, we want better things. We want the best of the best, but we don't want to do anything to receive it. Now, there's some blessings that God gives us that we don't do anything for. But how many know there's some blessings that, God, that, that you do for God, and you have to work for them? It's going to cost you something. How many know that when God is calling you to do something and it's bigger than you and you want to say no? Not me. Why not you? Why not? You got the power of the Holy Ghost. You have the power of his spirit. He'll put the words in your mouth that you need to speak. Relationship with God comes from studying his word. It comes out of prayer. It comes out of praise. It comes out of worship. It comes out of believing what God says and speaking it back to him. It sounds like this. Lord, you said that you are able to do exceeding and abundantly above all that I ask or think according to the power that worketh within us. We love the scripture that says, I can do all things through Christ. Oh, glory to God. Things, things, things. I, I can do better things through Christ that strengthens me. Well, you can't do a thing unless you make a move. You can't do a thing until you say, Lord, use my hand. You can't do a thing until you say, Lord, use my feet. You can't do a thing until you say, Lord, use my mouth, use my very being. It sounds like this. Paul said it like this. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Better things come to those that will get their hands dirty. Mm. What you mean get your hands dirty? Get involved. 
anybody in the life of your church. Some people, you know, they, 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 they want the, the benefits that God has, but they don't want to work as a result. They work harder for the man than they do for God. Oh, glory to God. Can I be real? Come on, let me, let me be a real pastor right now. Let me, be real, let me talk to you. You know, I, mean, I know it's cold outside, y'all. I know. You know, I'm, I'm driving yesterday, you know, bringing Jade back from an appointment, and this frantic woman calls me on the phone. My car sliding all over the place. I can't. I just slide. Weather was terrible out there. My wife calls me in a panic. And I'm saying, where you at? Where you at? I don't know. I, don't know. I said, tell me where you at so that me and Jaden can get to you. We going to come get you. It was a mess out there yesterday. Amen. But if that would have been a work day for some people, and it was, how many worked yesterday? Raise your hand. How many came late? How many got to work late yesterday? Yeah. <laughs> you did overtime too, probably. But, but I'm t we have to treat God like we treat our job. Yeah. I'm talking about sacrifice now. When we come into this sanctuary, it's not just about us being ministered to. It's ministering to each other. And I know I, know, I, know I get on your nerves sometimes. Why well, Pastor Bob got us high-fiving and touching and speaking into each other's life? It's to encourage you to minister to somebody that needs ministering to. See, you don't know what people are bringing to church. You don't know what they've been through all week long. <sighs> you don't know what their boss said to them. You don't know how they've been feeling all week. And to get to church and feel the same way you felt on your job, mm -mm, that don't add up. That don't add up. I'm trying to make you connect with somebody that believes God just the way you do, but you just need an extra push. How many need an extra push every now and then? You just need somebody to know that you need somebody to tell you that everything is going to be all right. Your hug, your touch goes a long way. And sometimes we think that the extent of ministry is this right here. This ain't got no power. This lectern ain't got no power. And the extent of ministry goes beyond the pulpit. I know some of you. Y'all are the ministers. You're the servants. You're the one that gets it done. You're the one that makes up the body of Christ. We all make up the body of Christ. This is not about a building. It's about a people. Oh, glory to God. So the next time I say, you know, get out of your seat. Tell somebody this. It's a way of you ministering to them. It's a way of you prophesying into their lives in the name of the Lord. So, to move further, there's a cost to receiving better things. For you to receive better things, it costs Jesus his life. Yes. Thank you, Lord. All right, all right. Thank you, Jesus. And how can we come to church knowing that Jesus gave his life and sit there and just say, you did okay, Jesus. You did all right, you know, you, I, I know you was bleeding, but you know, some, somebody came along and wiped it along. No, he, he paid such a price for us thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. that he deserves a response yeah. that says, Lord, you served, I'm gonna serve too. Can somebody say, how you serve matters? Tell your neighbor, how you serve matters. But I want you to know that when you serve, God has not forgotten your work. Deuteronomy 3, 31 and 6 says, Be strong and of a good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he it is that will go with thee. Oh, somebody ought to praise the Lord right now. 
He's going to go with you when you serve. He will not fail thee nor forsake thee. He will not let you down. In God, there is no failure. Can somebody shout better thing? Just giving you a few supporting scriptures to let you know that, that God is not going to fail you. God is not going to embarrass you. How many know that we embarrass him? He never embarrasses us. Let me, let me help you. Those of you, if you've never heard me say this before, I'll give it to you for the 107th time. When God calls someone to work for him, to minister for him, whatever capacity that's in, when he tells you the first time, it's going to be intimidating. It's going to be bigger than you. It's going gonna, it's gonna to build an excuse list why it shouldn't be you. You're going you're gonna to look at yourself and say, well, you know, I can't do this, I can't do that, I'm not able to do this, what are people going to say, I'm going to embarrass myself. If he calls you, he's going to give you what you need to pull it off. Oh, you ought to praise him. He's not going to let you down. He's not going to allow you to embarrass you. You'll bump your head every now and then. It's all right. Come on. It's all right. There are failures in ministry. Yeah. But when you fail, you've got to say, Lord, give me one more try. Give me another shot at this. I want to bless people. I just don't want to be saved and filled with the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues. I want to touch people's lives with my testimony. I want to touch people's lives and what God has done for me. Psalms 94 and 18, 19. When I said my foot slipped, mm -hmm. thy mercy, Lord, held me up. We know something about slipping in a buffalo winter, don't you? Mm -mm -mm. Anybody ever fell on ice? <laughs> Goodness mm -hmm. gracious. You know, sometimes when I'm watching football and I just see football players fall, you know, I, you know at 53 years old, I said, Lord, if I, if I fell like that, I said, they're going to have to leave me down there. Because you can, don't, 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 don't even try to pick me up. But, but we know something about, about slipping on ice. It hurt, don't it? Yeah. But the Lord is saying in the spiritual realm, when you're about to go down, I'm going to hold you up. Thank you. Or you ought to give God the praise. To like my soul. Sometimes thoughts are coming to take you off of your call and your mission. To take you off of the word of God. To distract you. Let me tell you something, 2020, I know it's going to be a blessing because in the beginning of the year, I got a whole bunch of distractions. Oh, glory to God. Am I talking to anybody right now? I, I purposed in my heart that I was going to let God's people know that better things are coming their way. And then my own distractions came to cloud what God had put in my heart. But I let the devil know that what God has for me, it is for me. What God has for you, it is for you. I don't care what distractions come. It may be a person. It may be a thing. It may be an old habit. It may be the devil's suggestion. But you let every devil in hell know, I know what God has promised me. In 2019, he said all the promises of God are yes and amen. And as a result, in believing what God said, 2020 is the year of better things.
Tell your neighbor, better things are coming. At 11.04, I'm almost out of here. God is intentionally looking for a few good men and a few good women, a few good boys, and a few good girls that will serve him out of the depths of their heart and let every enemy in hell know that God is true and the devil is a liar. I'm a servant of God. Can somebody say, I'm a servant of God? In the scripture, there was always a demand for laborers. Jesus had a demand for laborers. He called the 12 that turned into 70. The 70 had turned into 120. 120 turned later into 3,000. And we have the church of today. But there was always a demand for laborers. A demand for spiritual workers that would go out into a, a world to share the word of God. If you don't believe it, Matthew 9, 37 and 38. Matthew 9, 37 and 38. Then saith unto his disciples, the harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. There are few laborers in the church. There's more spe spectators than participants. And then when God gives the breakthrough, when God gives the answer, here come the spectators. Look what we did. <laughs> no, the Lord is saying the laborers are few. The fields are ready to be harvested. Field is the world, but how many know we can't reach the world in the four walls of this church? Matthew 9, 38 says, Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. 2020, I'm praying for laborers. Amen. I don't want no recycled members. Uh -oh. I don't want no recooked members. I don't want nobody. I don't want another pastor's members. Because when you inherit another pastor's members, you inherit their problems. I believe that God is calling people in the name of the Lord that will come into his church and serve without reservation. They'll come in one way, but God will make them all over again. In the name of the Lord, we have no right to judge, but the Bible lets us know, judge not, and you will not be judged. You don't know who God will use. Remember, I said a few weeks ago, what does a Christian look like? When you look at the person next to you, do you see a Christian? Do you see a Christian? They ain't praise God the whole service. They ain't say thank you one time, but they're a Christian. Oh, it's quiet in this place right now. In the name, mean as a snake, come every Sunday. Are you a Christian? What does a Christian look like? They come in all shapes and sizes. They come from all ethnic backgrounds. The question is, will they be among the laborers? We just don't want to come to church to hear the word. We want to come and go walk in the word. How many want to be used by God in this place? Give the Lord a hand, please. Come on, how many want to be used by God in a greater measure in 2020? Come on, give God a hand, please, and say, Lord, use me until you use me up. I want to close with this. God has saved you to serve. Better things come to those who serve. Oh, glory to God. Better things come. I'm, I'm almost done. I know y'all don't believe it, but I'm almost done. Better things come to those who serve. Tell your neighbor, it's time to serve. It's time in the name of the Lord to come out the corner, unfold our arms, unfold our legs, and, and uncross our legs and realize that God has a purpose in our lives. And 
Paul says in the name of the Lord that better things come to those that accompany salvation. Is anybody saved in here? If you're saved, you have salvation. What does that mean? If you've been delivered, if, if you've been set free, if, if you have been restored and you have been preserved and you know that you have a sound mind and you know that God is getting ready to use you or he's used you already, you have a right to expect better things to come. In the name of the Lord, For the, the, the bottom line is that some people think that God doesn't recognize works but he does second corinthians 5 and 10 says for we must all appear before the judgment seat of christ oh glory to god you better have yourself together when you're at that seat in the name of the lord because the bible says that everyone may receive the things done in his her her body according to that he hath done whether it be good or bad well let me tell you something when you do something for god have the right motive in the name of don't look for a trophy don't look for a certificate in the name of the lord realize that your reward is in heaven oh you ought to give god a praise because what god has for you is not for earthly reward there will be some rewards on earth you may get a certificate every now and then you may get a trophy you may get in the name of the lord the employee of the month parking spot but how many know that's temporal because ain't nobody driving cars in heaven oh you ought to give god the praise in here because what's on earth is temporal but how many need something that is eternal oh, oh glory to God for the Bible says for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have what everlasting life that's your reward but but can somebody shout with me in the meantime oh glory to God if the Lord delays his coming what will you do in the meantime oh glory to God yes you'll come to church but do you know the God of the church hallelujah you'll do in the name of the Lord what on earth what is required of you but but God says what are you putting on your record that is eternal first Corinthians 15 and 58 I love this scripture it says therefore my beloved brethren be ye steadfast unmovable always abounding in the work of the Lord it's time for the church to abound in the work of the Lord oh glory to God many of you are saved you're sanctified you're filled with the Holy Ghost you're set aside oh glory to God but how many know that you have to share with somebody what salvation is all about you have to share the love of Jesus Christ and the price that he paid and the and the scripture is telling us to abound to elevate in the to progress in the name of the Lord to be promoted in the work of the Lord for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain Somebody ought to praise him right now as I close. Because what you have done for the Lord is not in vain. Every time you witness the word of God is not in vain. Every time you taught a lesson from the word of God, it's not in vain. Every time you lifted your hands in praise, somebody should declare it's not in vain. Every time you clap your hands and give the Lord a round of applause, it's not in vain when you bless the person that didn't bless you is not in vain oh glory to God when you went the extra mile for somebody in the name of the Lord is not in vain when you intercede for those that won't pray for themselves can somebody shout is not in vain whatever you do for God is not in vain but in the meantime let the devil know I'm not going to sit in a corner but I'm going to be used by God look at your hands and say God anoint my hands oh glory to God shout hallelujah and say Lord anoint my voice look at your feet and say God order my steps because your steps have been ordered by God we ought to give God a praise because a better reward is coming to you. Not just any ordinary blessing. Don't pray the prayer any way you bless me. I'll be satisfied. Well, I serve a God that can handle my prayers. He can handle specifics. I can tell God how high, how long in the name of the Lord. I can tell him when, why, and where. Oh, glory to God. Give God a praise 
is in this place because you got a reward on the way because God has called you in the purpose and as you serve the Lord said I'm going to bless you oh glory to God Titus 3 and 8 says this is a faithful saying and these things I will that affirm constantly that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works if you believe in God maintain good works these things are good and profitable unto men because you are saved you were saved to help somebody else get saved oh glory to God if you're glad you're saved you need to give God a praise for who you gonna help get saved I don't know about you but in 2020 I'm gonna help somebody get saved I'm gonna help somebody get delivered I'm gonna help somebody get set free I'm gonna help somebody to pray and not faint I'm gonna serve my church out of the depths of my heart I'm gonna preach until the devil has to pack his bags and leave I'm gonna call on the name of the Lord until you get a breakthrough I'm gonna preach until somebody lifts their head and say Lord it's time I'm gonna serve like a shepherd I'm gonna feed I'm gonna guide I'm gonna direct I'm gonna counsel oh somebody give God the praise in the name of the Lord don't think about it hallelujah embrace the slogan of Nike tell your neighbor just do it because God said do it it may not feel good but just do it you may feel unqualified but just do it they may have written you off but just do it everybody judging you but just do it a few lies but just do it they're back and gossiping but just do it the enemy trying to kill you and kill your anointing but you just do it can somebody shout just do it God hallelujah the church needs your anointing I want to tell a few people that the anointing is not just for you but the anointing is for God's church give God a praise because your anointing is about to go to work if you believe it shout yeah hallelujah Hebrews 3 and 13 says but exhort one another daily oh glory to God how many know you got to exhort daily oh glory to God while it is called today don't wait till tomorrow to exhort your neighbor hallelujah don't wait till tomorrow to give somebody an encouraging word but the Bible says but exhort one another daily while it's called today let any one of you be hardened through deceitfulness of sin the word exhort means to invite the word exhort means to invoke the word exhort means to admonish the word exhort means to call to one side call somebody to your side and say walk with me as I walk with Jesus walk with me Oh, glory to God. As I walk with the Savior, as Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. Come on, give God the praise. Because as you follow Christ, better things are coming. As you follow Christ, a better anointing is coming. As you follow Christ, better jobs are coming. As you follow Christ, better resources are coming. Will you give God a praise? Exhort your neighbor daily. Give somebody a word in the name of Jesus. Don't walk by your neighbor 
neighbor when you know they need help. Luke 10 36 says, Which now of these three thinkest thou was a neighbor unto him that fell among thieves? Let me give you the backdrop. There was a man on the road to Jericho and he fell among thieves. Hallelujah. He was left bloody. They stole everything he had. Oh, glory to God. But down to Jericho Road, here come the priests. The preacher saw the man bleeding. He saw him wounded. He saw him hurt. He saw his wounds and his injuries. And he walked right by. See, religious people will walk right by you and know you need help. And then here come the Levite that led in the praise in the temple. He looked at the man and saw his condition, but he walked right by just like the priest. Hallelujah. I come to tell you, preachers, you got to respond to those that are in need. Worship leaders, you got to respond to those that are in need. But while the man was there bloody, God had not given up on him but there was a Samaritan man called the Good Samaritan he saw the man he saw his condition and he put the man on his own beast he poured wine and oil into his into his woes oh you ought to give God the praise hallelujah because somebody needs your help somebody needs your care in the name of the Lord don't be like the priest and the Levite but be like the good Samaritan oh glory to God look at your neighbor and say can I help you oh glory to God see y'all don't want to say it because you think they're going to ask for five dollars ask your neighbor can I help you in the name of the Lord oh glory as I close at 1121 I want to tell a few people, uh, stop dragging your feet uh, and serve God. Uh, pick up your feet uh, and expect better things. Uh, stop dragging your feet uh, and waiting for tomorrow uh, for what you can do today. Uh, tell your neighbor, uh, my feet don't hurt. Uh, I feel like walking for God. Uh, if your feet hurt, uh, get some comfortable shoes. Uh, because God said, uh, I got a work for you to do. Uh, I saved you uh, to bless you. Uh, I saved you uh, to show somebody uh, what it looks like uh, to be a child of God. Uh, if you know that in this year uh, that better things are coming, uh, jump to your feet uh, and give God a praise uh, because you know uh, that better things are uh, way I'm rejoicing because better things are coming your way I'm rejoicing because better things are coming your way you are coming out of being ordinary tell your neighbor I'm extraordinary because I belong to the almighty God he picked me up he turned me around he placed my feet on solid ground I come to tell you I'm saved by his power divide I'm saved new life supplied my life is sweet and my joy is complete tell somebody I'm saved I'm saved from the power of the enemy he saved me from my sins he saved me from my Myself. If you've been saved, give him a prayer. If you save, make the devil mad with a praise that said, I'm saved, I'm filled with the Holy Ghost, and God promised me that better things are on the way, but I'm not just going to be saved, I'm going to be a witness, I'm going to be a conduit of the word of God, tell somebody, I got a word in my spirit I got a witness in my soul I will not twirl my thumbs but I will minister I will attend to the
the knees of those that need a breakthrough. I will be the man that God called me to be. Women, you be the women that God called you to be. Better things, glorious things, excellent things, best things. Your blessings are coming from the top shelf. You ought to praise him. Your blessings are coming from the heavenly realm. Your blessings are coming from on high. I don't care what you're going through. Better. Better. It may be hard right now, but can somebody say better? You're going through a struggle, but can somebody say better? You may be sick, but today you got healed. Can somebody say better? Your family is going crazy, but say better. Your children may be struck out on drugs, but somebody say better. The doctor may have given you a bad report, but say better. Somebody may be trying to destroy your reputation, but somebody shout better. Oh, come on, minister to somebody. Get out of your seat and shout better. Better, Vanessa. Better, Brandon. Better, Mother. Better, things. Touch somebody. Say better. I don't know what you're going through, but better. Times may be hard, but better. It's coming. You almost lost it in 2019, but better. It's coming your way. They may try to get you fired, but better. It's coming. You may have lost your grants and scholarships, but better. It's coming. You may be making minimum wage, but better. It's coming. You may feel like you want to quit, but better. It's coming. The devil is lying on you, but better. It's coming. Better. It's coming. If you believe it, shout better. Yeah, 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 yeah. When you lie down at night, better at noonday, better in the evening, better at midnight, better with the spring, summer or fall, better January through December, better you may not feel it, but I prophesy that better be. You minister to the saints, shout better. Better. Put it in the atmosphere. Declare your better. For eyes have not seen, nor ears have heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for them that love him shall be. Better things for your family. Better things for your. 
community better things for your church better things on your job better things in your health better things in your spirit better things in your soul better things in your body better things in your ministry better things in your church if you believe it shout Anybody that's unsaved, anybody that has not accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, I want you to come to this altar. Just those that want to be saved, having been baptized in water, acknowledging Jesus Christ in his life, his death, his burial, and resurrection, I want you to come.